Almost a year ago, the small town of Delphi, Indiana, was turned upside down when two teenagers went missing. Less than a day after they went missing, they were found murdered near a hiking trail in the woods. The events triggered a manhunt unlike anything this small town had ever seen. And the case, some 11 months later, remains unsolved, despite some shocking clues in the matter. We're going to speak to the families of the teenagers in a moment, but first, the story so far. Police in Indiana are pleading for help to solve a double murder mystery. Several key pieces of evidence have been found on one of the victim's own cell phone. On February 13th, 2017, 14-year-old Liberty German and 13-year-old Abigail Williams went missing while hiking in the woods close to their homes in Delphi, Indiana. A day later, Valentine's Day, their bodies were found about a half mile from where they were last seen. We have nobody in, in custody at this time. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, there is somebody out there that did this horrendous crime. We're gonna track him down. Despite a countywide manhunt, the best clues to date came from the murder victims themselves. Liberty German captured this image the day she went missing of someone police say they suspect could be the killer. And a short audio recording also on her phone, which investigators say might be the killer's voice. Why Libby? Why Abby? I say that because this is a classic example and a clear example that evil lives amongst us. As a leader of the Indiana State Police, I say, I am so very sorry. Months later, the families of the slain teens still holding out hope that the killer would be brought to justice. I hope this thing's over tomorrow. Hope, hope tonight. Hope that, to, you know, as my wife always posts out there, today's the day. Uh, I hope it is today. It's continually changing. Uh, our lives have been changed forever. We have a new normal that we're still getting used to. Liberty's grandparents, who raised her from the time she was three, Mike and Becky, uh, are here. Uh, and her sister, Kelsey, is with me as well, as is Abigail's mother, Anna Williams. Thank you all so much for being here. So it's been almost a year. And the question is whether the case has gone cold or whether we think the police still have some real leads. What's your thought on that, Mike? Uh, it's definitely not a cold case at this point. Uh, we continue to get tips in and they continue to work on I mean, we've had a over 26,000 tips in this case. It takes a long time to go through those. Uh, law enforcement has been, done, been doing a spectacular job uh, working through all these, and we need to trust law enforcement that they're doing their job, mm -hmm. and, and they are. What, what do you think happened to the girls? I mean, we know they were killed, but what, what do you think happened that day? They, um, there were several kids there that earlier that day, and then later on that day. Um, they just happened to be there, and there was a law of people being around. Um, so I think they were alone at that particular time, a short span, and somebody took them. Was this a place the kids, you know, the pictures you see of it make it look very remote and woodsy. It was the woods. Was this a place that kids would go to hang out? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a trail system connected to our city. I mean, you're supposed to walk out there. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of a scenic area where a lot of people go and take pictures because you got this, the bridge that, you know, it's over the Deer Creek. It's a railroad bridge. People take pictures out there, um, various things. And that's what the girls were doing. That's what they asked to go do that day. Say, hey, let's, can we go out to the high bridge and, and take some pictures and hang out? Because it was, happened to be a, a very warm day in February for mm -hmm. Indiana. February 13th, it was 60 plus degrees out. It was a warm day in Indiana, but the one photo, I mean, incredibly, somehow Liberty uh, managed to take a photo of the man. Do we believe this man is her killer? I certainly do. She managed to get this photo of the man. He is bundled up like it is not a, like it's not a warm day. Yeah. Does that tell us anything about him, do, you, do we believe? I mean, he, he, some people have speculated he may have been homeless, he may have been wearing all of the clothes. Do we know? Uh, my opinion, we don't know for sure, but yeah, he was overdressed in, in my, you know, my opinion for that day. Uh, did he ride in on a motorcycle? Did he ride a bicycle? Did he wear extra clothes to help cover things up? I, I don't know the questions to that, but just like Libby, we had to coax her into, take a sweatshirt with you. She goes, no, it's warm enough. I don't need, no, you know. Becky's told her, said, no, you take a sweatshirt with you. When you found out, Becky, that, that Liberty had photographed the man we, we believe may have been her killer. 
and audio taped what appears to be his voice. What did you think? Thank you. I mean, otherwise we would have had nothing. Uh, but that was kind of Libby. She um, watched a lot of crime shows. Um, her and Abby both wanted to go into law enforcement. Uh, Libby wanted to be in forensics. She wanted to help the FBI. So, you know, uh, she kind of thought that way. So something wasn't right. Kelsey, um, your sister was, was Liberty, Liberty. Yeah. And do you believe if she had been, that she would have willingly gone with a man who was forcing her, as we heard, down the hill if he didn't have a weapon, if he hadn't been threatening her in some way? No, I think if she was gonna go down the hill, it would have had to been like way super forcing her to go down the hill. She would have tried to fight back or something if he didn't. Mm -hmm. And, and what do you think, Anna? I mean, do you believe that the, the girls knew this man or that this was a stranger who encountered them in the park? I have a hard time believing that they did know who it was because like with the, with the picture or anything like that or having it down the hill, um, if it was somebody that you'd seen from across the bridge, you would have been, hey, you know, there wouldn't have been any kind of alarm to do so. So it is really hard to believe that this is anybody we know. Mm -hmm. we, we've always hoped this isn't anybody that we know because it's a very tough situation to live with and we have a very small, tight-knit community and, and to think that this person is still right there in our own backyard is overwhelmingly horrible. Because they haven't found this man. No. It's not that they no. found him and they've ruled him in or out. They haven't found the man in the photograph. I mean, you went for... The, the girls were murdered within four hours of being dropped off, right, at the park. How long after, it, after that was it that you were told? We, we found them, uh, well, th they'd been missing. We'd suspended the search at nighttime, started up again the next morning. And um, people in and out all day, and new folks coming to volunteer, new helpers, new volunteers from all over, and scent dogs coming in, and go get this and go get that. And uh, when the pastor found me, it had to have been about noon. And I just remember the rush of something going on around me and not really knowing what it was. And when he came and said, has somebody come found you yet? And I said, no, I, I, I got to get off the phone now and da, da, da. And as we walked through the yard and up the stairs, it was like, nobody's happy right now. This, this, this isn't good. And it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe it's been almost a year. Uh, I mean, I just remember when the case broke, and I can only imagine what the experience of the past 11 months have been like for you, especially going through your first holidays uh, without your daughters. There's much more to the case, uh, including the lessons for other young boys and girls out there when we're joined uh, by one of the police officers heading the investigation. Next. I'm confident that we're, we're going to find the monster that did this. I'm confident we will. There is nothing that we won't do, nothing we're not doing. And um, I was asked earlier, is this going to go cold? And um, I don't believe it is. I, I believe this will come to fruition. That was Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter, uh, who joins us now, along with the families of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. Um, Doug, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. May I ask you, and I know they're, they're, they're withholding a lot of the details because when they find the killer, they don't want the details to have been broadcast first on national television. Uh, but are you able to tell us on that tape that Liberty took whether you, you hear the crime? We believe that she captured an image of the murderer. Mm -hmm. We believe that she captured the voice of the murderer. And that's as far as I can go with what has been on and what we found on that phone. But this is, this is everybody's daughter, everybody's daughters. Mm -hmm. What she did that day, I hope one day to be able to tell her thank you. Do you know what? Do you know whether it was a conscious choice to press record? You know, do we have any idea how the tape, how the iPhone was it an iPhone? We uh, how the iPhone. We went believe on? it was a conscious choice by her, uh, because what was happening was not normal. But that's speculative at this point in time. Mm -hmm. What you, you all went on the Dr. Phil show um, months and months ago, and I know that led to thousands of tips. Have any of them been helpful? I, I, I would never say a tip is unhelpful, but at this point in time, we, we, we're here, so we're continuing to perpetuate this message. Um, and I think every time we get an opportunity to do that, we, we should and we will continue 
to do that. I want the audience to know that there is a $240,000 reward available for information leading to the apprehension of the killer. Correct. Is that it? It's 240000 contributed by all sorts of well-wishers, right? Including, did you say that some of the Indianapolis Colts? That's correct. Uh, so they are trying to help people come forward with information about this man who we see, again, identified as the suspect in, in the murders. Has there been, have there been any other similar crimes, Doug, similar MOs in the area? Well, we believe that a person that would commit a crime like this with such incredibly evil intent likely has committed that crime before. And with that known, he likely will commit it again. And the, the, the image that we have to America is please disregard the face, but look at the body because anybody could identify a family member by looking at the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm, 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 I'm asking. Can you tell the age of this man? We can't. You don't know, and not even a range. I think a range would be speculative at this point in time. Obviously a grown man. Mm -hmm. Were there any eyewitnesses who actually saw him? No, there were not. Other than obviously the girls. Right. Um, what, do you, what do you think? Do you, do you think, Anna, that there's a, there's a message here for other young girls or young boys? Uh, when we talked about that um, amongst ourselves is how did this happen? How did this happen? And the one conclusion we had is they did everything right. They had a phone and they used the buddy system. That is the most you can ever really hope for when, when your teens are going out and about. Larger groups are better than being by yourself, mm -hmm. being aware. It was broad uh, daylight, middle of the afternoon. Yeah, Liberty was obviously aware enough to sense or feel something that caused her to do what she did. Um, and, and we hope for that with our children, that they, they will pay attention to those things in their surroundings. Um, do we, do we know that anything else could have been done? Did, did we not teach them to defend themselves? Absolutely not. I mean, they were, they were smart girls. They were athletic. Um, Abby being a little bit bitty, itty bitty tiny compared to Libby, we always assumed that somebody had fallen and gotten hurt and the other stayed. And that's why we, they were missing all night was because mm -hmm. one would not leave the other. So in this same case, um, Weapon, no weapon, none of that even matters. The, the, the safety and security and their friendship, um, I believe, is what kept them together, that should one or the other have had the opportunity to leave, they didn't. Mm -hmm. that and they, That they stayed together to the end. Absolutely. And we believe that they fought. We, we have to believe that they fought to protect each other uh, until they couldn't anymore. I want to tell the audience that uh, our affiliate, our NBC affiliate, WTHR, uh, is now reporting that the search has been extended by the FBI for the killer into southeastern Tennessee, into southeastern T Tennessee, and that you can help. Uh, so that if that's your area and if that figure, that man, looks at all familiar to you, um, the hotline information that we showed is also available now. You can find it right now on our website. You can see the phone number there. You can see the email there. And if you can't remember that, just remember today.com slash Megan today because we're going to post it there and again $240,000 reward uh, for information leading to the man's apprehension. Um, can I get your thoughts on that Doug on the expansion of the search by the FBI into uh, southeastern Tennessee? Uh, this is a national this investigation is, is national. Um, I'm, I'm tracking with what's happening in, down in Tennessee and I don't want to be be singularly focused on any one place right now. Mm -hmm. Closing thought from you on whether there's something young girls or young boys should know if they find themselves in a situation where someone is trying to take them. Yeah, pay attention to what's happening around you. Evil lives amongst us, Kelly. And uh, Megan, I'm, so, I'm sorry, evil lives amongst us. And uh, we've got to teach our kids that that's the case, but we don't want them to live in fear, but we certainly want them to live aware. And uh, every single day is a, is a blessing, isn't it? Amen. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Perfect. Best of luck, and we'll continue to follow this. Thanks. We'll be right back.